Hello, fellow diamond painting addicts, and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne, and I'm here with the much requested part two of my kind of basic versus luxury series. This has turned into more of a, here's all this stuff you could buy, but do you really need all of it? Which I guess is sort of the same thing. So in part one, we really just covered some basics. We talked about what you get in a basic toolkit. And so we covered from this all the way up to custom pens, steel tips, different kinds of putties that you can use and all the different kinds of trays and everything. Okay, so basically in part one, we talked about the things that you can use to get diamonds onto your canvas. What we didn't talk about was, well, one, kits. And typically you get what are budget kits. You will get them rolled up in this little package and the drills and your tool kit are inside of them. Your more premium kits, and these can range, the budget kits can range anywhere from $3 or less sometimes if you can find a sale to, depending on the size, budget companies sell some larger kits upwards of $25, $30. But once you hit that price, then you can typically get some from the more premium companies like Diamond Art Club or Craftably or Dreamer Designs or Oraloa or any of those kind of uh, Bella Art Diamonds, any of those kind of diamond painting companies. They also will come with a tool kit. It may be a little upgraded from what you get with the budget kits, but the same basic things are in there. Once we get all of our supplies so that we can put the drills on the canvas, what do we do with the drills? Because you get a big package of drills, right? The drills that you're gonna put on the canvas, where do they go? You need to have some kind of storage system for those so that you can organize your drills and know where they go. Most kits will have some sort of schematic on them to tell you what drills are what. They, many places use the DMC codes or, and they will have a symbol and then they will also number them in a series. You can use any of all of those to organize your kits, but how do you do that? Now, a lot of drills come in baggies. You can literally just work from the baggies. If that works for you, then great, you're done. You don't have to do anything. I have seen people use all kinds of different things. I have little ketchup containers. You could put your drills in this as you open them from a bag because some of the bags are not resealable that drills come in. You can put them in condiment cups that come with a lid. You can do all sorts of things. So you have this option, condiment cups. I think most of us, if we don't use baggies, started out with these Tic Tac containers and they come in a box and they're just little containers. The lid comes off so you can pour your drills in there the smaller lid so you can pour your drills out into your tray and a little place where you can label them. However, most of us, if we spend any time working with these, find out that these containers are one, too small and two, too fiddly. Pouring things in and out, pouring out is fine. Sometimes getting them back in can be difficult. There are ways around that as well, but after a few kits of using these, I decided to move on to something else. Now you can get these, what they call Tic Tac containers in a large size, and I have them here. And it's basically the same thing as the Tic Tac containers, but they're larger, so they hold more. They've got a bigger spout so that you can pour them in and out. And it's just a little neater and cleaner than the smaller ones. I actually have never used this one. <laughs> I don't think. If I have, it's only been once, but I keep it just, just in case. So that's one option, the Tic Tac containers. And I'll stick links for, for most of this stuff down below. Not all of it, but most of it. So after the Tic Tac containers, I think the thing that most of us probably went to was these little 28 slot containers. The thing I don't like about these is the same with the Tic Tacs, they're very small and they're connected. So even though they open individually, when you're trying to pour drills, especially when you're getting ready to de-kit and pour your, put your drills away, sometimes it's just annoying. And because they're connected, you can't really move them around. You've got to move the whole row at a time. And so it just makes it less customizable. So these are very inexpensive as well. I think at one point I bought like a set of 10 of these on Amazon and they were very inexpensive. 
People also look for all kinds of other options that they prefer. Rather than these 28 ones that are connected, I have found these, and they are also only 28, but they are individual cubes. They are one inch cubes and they hold a lot more. You just pinch the sides and they open. The top is nice and flat. It's very nice looking when you get your drills all put inside of it, so I love these. These are probably one of my top three, number three of my top three for drill storage containers. You can get things like craft made storage. I'll stick a picture of that over there. I tried some Star Roar ones that they had. People have tried all kinds of stuff. I know people have gone to Dollar Tree. This is actually a storage system from Harbor Freight that is made for like nuts and bolts, but people have adapted it to work for diamond painting. So anything that you can find like that, that would work like this, or let me move some of these out of the way you can use these bottle cases. This is probably, of my top three, this is probably number two. You can get these cases in all kinds of different designs or you can just get them in plain black. They usually have a colored piping around the side. And then you just have these plastic bottle cases, usually 60, you can get them in, I think 10, 20, 30, 60, and 120. I think Art Dot has one that's like 240 or something. So you can get these in a variety of places. This is number two of the ones that I have. And then my, my top favorite is of course my Elizabeth Ward trays. And I love these. I've gotten mine on Amazon, but you can also get them from Target, Joann's, other craft stores, or something similar to this. This is actually made to be bead storage for people who make jewelry, but I love it because it lets you do things in a modular way. There are different sized containers in here, so I can pick the ones that work for me and organize my tray the way that I want to. So this is my top favorite way to store my drills. Now, when you're storing your drills, how do you know which ones are which? That's the big question. You've gotta have a way to say, oh, well, this is number one, number two, or this is this symbol, or this is DMC 550, or this is whatever, however you're going to organize your drills. So you can, if you're using very simple containers, also use very simple labels. And that's what I have here. These are just some removable labels that I got on Amazon. These are round. And I've also purchased some rectangular ones so that I could do, these came free that you can get. A lot of the storage systems you get will give you labels for free that come with them or you can just buy like round garage sale stickers that you can find at like Walmart or someplace like that. But that's how you can label your containers so that you know what each color is, what symbol it corresponds to on your canvas, etc. Now, some people don't like these storage solutions for their drills and they will get something, some kind of tower method. And I'll stick a picture over there of one that I've used. You can get towers from all kinds of places. There are people who 3D print them for specifically for trays that they 3D print. There are just places you can get some, I've bought them on Amazon, where you can just use whatever works for you. It doesn't have to be perfect, but those people prefer to kit up into trays. That method can get to be very expensive because you have to purchase enough trays to kit up however many number of drills. And I do a lot of kits that have 50 plus colors. And so, when you're talking about $10 roughly average per tray, and I need 50 of those, that's $500 just for the tray, plus I gotta buy the tower. You know, eventually maybe it all evens out versus what I've spent on storage over the years, but whatever works for you, again. Okay, so then the next thing I wanna talk about is washi tape. Because washi tape is generally what people use to outline the edges of their canvas, whether it's double-sided adhesive or poured glue, there is usually a little bit of overhang outside the actual grid where you're gonna be diamond painting. And as you're working on it, if you lay your arm in it or you just leave it exposed, dirt, lint, animal dander, if you have pets, can get stuck in it and it just is ugly. So to keep it clean and covered, most diamond painters will use some sort of washi tape. Washi tape varies widely in quality and in price. You can find it at budget companies. The quality can be hit or miss. 
You can find it on places like Amazon or you can go to specialty stores and buy it. You can also buy it in craft stores. I've bought it from like Michael's and Joann's before. You can find people on Etsy who sell it. It's just, it can be very hit or miss. And it also depends on what you like, you know, what you want. Do you want the thicker one? Do you want the thinner ones? There's some that are even thinner than that. Do you want something like that size? It's all a matter of what you prefer to use. They have, I have some foil ones here, so you can see those that have got the foil on them. So, and, and then some of them can be very plain and they also differ in the amount of tape that you get. You can see these larger ones, you get quite a bit more actual tape than you do on this one. So just some things to be aware of when you're talking about washi tape. The other thing that you can use washi tape for is to section your canvas. What I mean is most diamond paintings come with some sort of cover over the either tape or glue. If it's a poured glue canvas, the cover is usually see-through, transparent. If it is a double-sided adhesive canvas, it is usually an opaque, usually blue and white cover. So you can use those covers if you want, and you can use washi tape to section off your canvas. You just place the washi tape in a grid over the plastic cover, and then you cut your sections as you go so you're not exposing the whole diamond painting as you're painting. Pro tip, Jess gave me this tip, Rather than using one of those ceramic cutters and being afraid that you're gonna cut through the canvas, you can use a seam ripper to just cut through the cover paper. The little guide here will keep the cutting part away from your canvas so you don't have to worry about cutting through your canvas. If you use the cover sheets, whether you're using the opaque one or the, the see-through one, a lot of people like to use cover minders and that's what these are. They're just cute little items with a magnet attached to the back and then another magnet. And basically it's just made so that you can sandwich your cover sheet and hold it in place while you're working. And then when you don't need it anymore, you lift it up, pull your cover sheet back down, put the cover minder back in place. You can get something very cute like this. This one actually came in a diamond painting toolkit. This one I purchased, you can make your own, you can do all kinds of things. If you don't use the cover sheets, which I normally don't, then you really don't need cover minders. What I normally do is use release papers. Now, before I knew about release papers, what I used was what my family calls partridge paper, which is parchment paper. Not wax paper, parchment paper. Parchment paper is made to be non-stick. This is literally just some parchment paper that I had in my house at the time. And I cut it into sections so that I could work on a diamond painting without the cover sheet because I felt like the cover sheet was getting in my way. I literally just went to Walmart, bought some parchment paper, cut it into pieces, and then laid it on top of my canvas. It is non-stick, so it peels off. You don't have to worry about that. Again, parchment paper, not wax paper. And this is what I use for cover sheets. And then after I had been diamond painting a while, I discovered what they call release papers. And these are silicone coated papers, so they're non-stick on both sides, and they're usually just white, and you can use them in place of the parchment paper. They do the same thing. It doesn't matter what side you lay them on, they'll stick to your canvas, the sections that you are not currently working on to keep all of the dirt and dust and dander off of your painting. Now, then people started doing very decorative things and making stickers to go on their release papers. I'm gonna come back to stickers because stickers kind of run the gamut. So stay with me here, we're still on release papers. You could get stickers to put on your release papers to go with your kit to make it more pretty, do what you wanted. Or they have now, people have discovered that you can buy release paper that is non-stick on one side, but on the other side, you can print on them and make really cool designs and do what you want. I purchased this one. You can get them from all over Amazon, Etsy. I made this one in Canva and just printed it out because I was playing, but it was Canada and I thought it was super cute with the little Mounties and the moose and the bear. And then here's a bubble design that I created that I'm using on a canvas that I'm working on. So kind of the sky's the limit when it comes to release papers. Some people prefer just the plain white because it's too overwhelming to have a pattern on them, but some people prefer to have everything kind of matchy matchy and match the design that's on their release papers with what's on their canvas, etc. Same thing with washi tape. 
I don't think I have a canvas that this probably matches, but I mean, does it matter? Maybe to some people it does. So I just like to find one that sort of matches and is pretty. It doesn't have to match exactly or be the same theme or anything like that. Same with my cover minders. It makes for some very pretty pictures on Instagram if your pens and your trays and your cover minders and your washi tape and all of that match, but it doesn't have to. It's all purely preference. Again, do you need all of these things? No. You don't need the fancy release papers. You can just use cheap old parchment paper. You don't need fancy stickers. You can just use stickers that come with your storage. Do you need to buy any of this storage? No, you literally can just use some condiment containers. Even if you just had like some glass jars or something at your house, whatever you can find that you can use that works for you. Now, many diamond painting companies have started to include washi tape and a cover minder in their toolkits. So some of your more premium diamond paintings may include some of those things. Not all of them do, but many of them do. I've covered storage, I've covered washi tape, I've covered cover minders, release papers. So let's talk about stickers. So like I said, if you're gonna use one of these storage containers for your drills to separate them out so that you can work on your painting, you need to somehow label them with the schematic, the number, the symbol, or the DMC code that came on your diamond painting. Many of the premium diamond painting companies will include a sticker sheet that includes pre-cut stickers, so you just have to peel them off and put them on your containers done. However, especially budget diamond paintings do not come with those. They might come with an inventory sheet or they may come with nothing. So in that instance, what I do, if I have the inventory sheet, I can use that and my sticker maker that I'm gonna show you in a second. Or if it doesn't have an inventory sheet, I can scan it using my scan function on my printer, scan it into my computer, print it out on a piece of paper, and then I can use my Xyron sticker maker to make a sticker. So all I do is I print out the schematic on a piece of paper, just regular old computer paper. I cut it down so it will fit in here. You stick it in here and then you pull this and it will turn it into a sticker. And then you can cut your stickers apart and use them to label your containers. Now, this is a very inexpensive way to do it. I think, I'll stick a link for this down below, but I think the Xyron is like $10, $9, something like that on Amazon. You can get it in craft stores probably as well. You can get permanent adhesive or you can get repositionable adhesive. Beware if you get the Xyron, the repositionable is so hard to get. Although I've had people tell me the permanent is not actually permanent, it works fine too. I've not tried that but that's what I've been told. Now I happen to have a cutting machine and because I have a cutting machine, I can make my own stickers. So I have done all kinds of things where I have made different kinds of stickers. Some of these are square. I don't know if you can see that. Let me lift it up a little bit here. These stickers are cut to be square and then these stickers are cut to be round. So if I'm working on a round diamond kit or a square diamond kit, then I can use the appropriate sticker. Does it matter? No. I just like to do it that way. Now, in addition to being able to just make stickers like this for my containers, I also have the ability to make stickers that I can just stick onto my release papers. So just die cut stickers that I could then stick on my release papers. And because the release papers are non-stick, it will peel off and then I can reuse both the stickers and the release papers if I want to. Or like I said, you can use the printed release papers. So there are some additional items that you can purchase that will help you do your diamond painting. Again, do you need all of these things? You absolutely do not. You can use masking tape instead of washi tape. It's very cheap and easy to find. You don't need cover minders. You can use the stickers that come with a lot of the storage options. If you don't want to buy any of the storage options, you can use, like I said, people I've seen get some kind of storage solution they find at the dollar store or whatever, whatever works for you. Do you need fancy release papers? You absolutely do not. You can just use the parchment paper, cheap, easy to obtain, and it works great. Again, this is all just kind of what do you need to diamond paint? Just a way to separate your drills so you can have them available to you while you're diamond painting. However you do that, 
is up to you, whatever makes you the most comfortable. And then the last thing that I wanna talk about is your workspace. Having a comfortable workspace is super important. So the first thing that you probably should take into consideration for your workspace is lighting. Do you have good lighting for you to be able to see your diamond paintings and to see what you're doing? Most people, most diamond painters will opt for a light pad and I'll stick a picture over there. I have had several different light pads. I have a small, I think A3 size, and then I've had an either an A1, I think it was an A1 size. They both work great. I just don't prefer to use a light pad. It actually fatigues my eyes faster than if I use just a regular lamp or something. So I don't find them necessary, but lots of diamond painters love them and absolutely swear by them. So if that is helpful, diamond painting light pads are pretty inexpensive and easy to find and I'll stick some links down below. I prefer to use like a table lamp or I had a standing magnifying lamp. So it was a lamp, but it also had a magnifier in it and it was set next to my chair so that I could focus it on my diamond painting and use the magnifier so I didn't always have my nose right to the glue of the diamond painting. You may find that helpful, you may not. That just depends on, again, what is most comfortable for you. The other thing that might make your diamond painting workspace more comfortable is instead of working on a flat space like this, because many people find that, that they end up hunched over and they end up with a lot of back or neck pain, you can get a table easel and I'll stick a picture of that over there. Now, table easels are not great if you're working on super big diamond paintings, but if it's something that's a, a typical size, you know, 40 by 60, somewhere around in there, just a, a table easel like that one that I just showed you will work fine. And I'll stick a link to that down below as well. I used my table easel for a quite a while when I first started diamond painting until I discovered I actually prefer working on a flat surface. However, I had so many people tell me that having it tilted was so much better for you that I actually ended up buying a drafting table and I'll stick a picture of my drafting table over there and I'll stick a link to it down below. The drafting table was okay, but I actually found myself leaning on the angled drafting table more than I found myself leaning on just my flat table. So for me personally, the drafting table was not a great solution. What I ended up going with, and this is an expensive option, so this is not for everyone, but I did it for health reasons as well, is I bought an adjustable table. So I can adjust the height of the table. So it's electric, it has a motor, and I can program in some, some settings so that I can just push a button and it'll go to a certain height, whether that's low or high, or you can just move it incrementally with some buttons on the table. Like I said, it's not cheap, and I'll stick a link to it down below as well, but I find it super helpful. If I'm feeling like I'm spending too much time hunched over, I can raise it up a little bit. If I'm tired of sitting, I can raise it all the way up so that I can stand. I really love it. For me personally, like I said, for my health reasons, I really like the adjustable table. Now, I'm gonna stick links to as much of this stuff that I've talked about down below. I have not used everything that I'm going to link. So if I actually have it here and you've seen it, <laughs> then I've tried it. But so I haven't tried every storage system out there. I haven't tried every drafting table out there. I haven't tried every adjustable table out there. So I just wanted to give you an idea of what things I use so that you could look at this. And again, are these things that are necessary? No, you literally, again, could diamond paint with this. If your drills came in baggies, paint from that. Even if they don't come in baggies, the bags that they come in, even if they're not resealable, you could buy or use paper clips or binder clips and just clip them shut when you're not using them. It all depends on what is comfortable for you. Sometimes though, you may have to try out a few things and decide, yes, I really like that, or no, I don't like that, I wanna try something else. For me, for example, I bought the Harbor Freight containers because everyone was just amazed at how well they worked. They hold a lot of drills. I understand why people like them. They are not for me. And that goes with a lot of other things. And I have by no means touched on every single thing <laughs> that you could buy. I still have a whole nother list. However, I feel like this was enough to cover for part two. 
I'm going to do a part three as well. And in the part three, I'm going to talk about lots of, I mean, these are things that even kind of dedicated diamond painters probably don't have. They may have one or two, probably don't have all, probably haven't tried all of them. Again, I haven't tried everything, but some things that I want to talk about. And then I also haven't talked about what to do with your diamond paintings when you're finished. So those will be some things that I want to talk about in the next video as well. I feel like that was a lot. This video is not going to be as long as the first one, I don't think, but I think I covered most of the other, you might need this to diamond paints things. And I'll save part three for that. You definitely don't need these, but they could be helpful. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I think that's it. If there's something that you think I forgot, leave me a comment down below and let me know. Like for instance, when I did part one, I had several people say, oh, you didn't mention light pads. Oh, you didn't mention this. Oh, you didn't mention that. So hopefully I covered most of that in this video. If I didn't, like I said, leave me a comment down below and let me know. I do have a part three planned. I don't know when I will get to that, but hopefully this is enough for you to kind of chew on and maybe go out and check out and try some of these things and see what you think. Maybe one of them will make your diamond painting life easier. That's it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for sticking around till the end of the video. Before you leave, don't forget to do all the things. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching.